Hi, my name's John. In this, the fourth part, we're going to talk about AC welding. AC welding is for welding aluminium. As I've already said, this video is not to show you how to TIG weld. As much better weld as on YouTube, that will show you how to TIG weld. What I do want to show you is how I get on with the welder, doing with it what I need to do. There's a shitload of knobs on the front of this welder. Uh, we're going to be concerned with two of them today. We want AC balance and we're frequency control. I don't want to go too technical and bore you with detail, but that is things you need to know about aluminium and how to set the machine up to weld aluminium. There's a bit of aluminium there, a bit of aluminium plate, two and a half mil plate. It looks nice and clean, it is fairly clean, but it's got a surface coating of oxide on it. You can't see, it's like rust on steel, except you can see the rust on steel as a surface coating on here. Now the surface coating on aluminium melts at roughly three times the melting point of the base metal. Which is why we use an alternating current AC to weld it. Alternating current means it's switching between positive and negative. The electrons are going friggin' ballistic, jumping in and out of the metal. We use the AC, alternating current, as a means of breaking down the surface film of oxide to enable it to weld it. That's why AC welding works, it's got a self cleaning. There's a control on here which says AC balance goes from 30 to 70. What that does, it determines how long your electrode is negative. If you turn it down to 30%, you've got maximum cleaning effect. If you turn it up to 70%, you've got maximum penetration. Normally, about 40% for metal, for metal like that. What I'll do, I'll run some weld beads at varying percentages and you can see the, you can see the effect of how it cleans the metal. The next control is what ESA frequency. On a newer type transformer welder, you are stuck at 60 Hz. On a modern inverter, this one goes from 50 to 250. This has the effect of tightening up the arc. It's like a, like a bushy flame or a, a tight flame or an oxyacetylene. What I'll do, I'll run some well beads, starting off at 50, going all the way up to 250. You'll see the difference, the higher frequency makes. I've had one or two comments since my last video, saying I didn't show any of the welds I did last time, which is right, I didn't. Uh, some photographs coming up now, showing the welds I did on uh, stainless steel and nail steel. <laughs> Right, well, I'll set on TIG, AC, 2T on my torch control. We've got it set about 75 amps. I've got about 40% on the AC balance. Right, the first one is set at 50 hertz. Move up to 100 for the second one. One fifty. Two hundred. The final one, two fifty. Right, these are the five weld beads. That's the 50 hertz, 100, 150, 200, and 250. You can hear the frequency go up until we got to the 250, which actually sounds like a wasp in a jar. The frosted area, this bit around the side of the weld, 
That's where the AC current's been cleaning. That's a cleaning action. See the frosted area on each side of the weld where the metal's been cleaned. That was welded with about 65 amps. I'm going to try to see them well, but this time with a pulse. I'd like to talk a little bit about TIG torches. The one that comes with that torch, it's an SR26 torch with a remote button. It's a nice torch but it is quite large. Seeing that the welder is capable of doing 200 amps, so that obviously they're supplying a torch that will carry 200 amps. I got on the phone at Artec asking what they would suggest for a smaller torch. And they come back suggesting I had a WP9 and it sends a WP9 torch out, uh, it's a lot lighter, a lot more flexible, but it's only rated at 125 amp on DC and 80 amp on AC, which will be enough for 99% of the work I'll be doing. As you can see, it's a lot lighter, a lot more flexible. The consumables in the head are all different, the ceramics, the bodies and the collars. The tungstens are the same. The basic internals of the torch are the same, they're just slightly smaller. What I did get with the torch, I got what they call a gas lens kit. Your normal, your normal torch has a collet body like that, with four holes in that allow the gas, the shield and gas to coat, that screws in there like that. On the gas lens kit, A large gas lens, what you get, you get a new bollocks. You get a big insert, oh, which goes on there. That's a collar to hold that. Now you can see on this one, instead of having a series of little holes around there, it's got some very, very fine mesh in there, which allows the gas to come through a lot smoother. Instead of the gas just tumbling out of them four holes, it comes out of those little fine mesh holes in a much, much smoother method. And there's a large ceramic goes on there, and that has the effect of producing a nice cone of gas. You get much better gas shielding with the gas lens, plus you use less gas. And obviously your collar goes in the back and your, your collar body goes on just the same. That's a large gas lens. I've also got a standard gas lens for it. And your gas lens screws in, and you can see it's just a it's just a smaller, smaller just a smaller, same design, just smaller. That screws into there. Got your cup goes on. Collet goes in the back, and what you can use, you can use a, a stubby back cap, make it smaller again. Short as the tungsten goes in. What you can do with a gas lens kit, you can have the tungsten sticking out a lot further. You can have it all the way out there, which is ideal for getting into corners. You want to try and weld into a corner where you cut it 
normally get in, get in tight. You can see how much smaller the torch is when it's assembled compared to that one. I'm going to work some half inch aluminium plate, some heavy plate. So I'm going to use the, use the, the big torch, the 26 torch. And I'm going to change out the electrode and put a bare electrode in. Right, we need a big collet. This torch does come with a smaller back cap. You could put that on, but it'll mean cutting the cutting the tungsten down the length. When you're working on a bench, it doesn't doesn't get in the way. Tungsten goes in like that. That's good for for two ramps, no problem at all. Torch. Changing the torch is a simple enough job. You can put lighter consumables into a big torch and well small stuff. Don't try putting large consumables into a small torch, turn the amperage up and well big stuff because you'll melt the torch. Don't ask how I know you'll melt the torch, but you'll melt the torch. Right. First thing we'll change, take off the gas connector, organ connector. Simply unscrews, it's got an adapter on it. That would be a, a torch control. But I'm using the foot pedal, so we'll leave that in. Another little clip from there, simple as that. Put the torch away so it doesn't get damaged. Comes with a nice protective sheath on it. Nice bit of kit. Right, big torch. <clears throat> Dead straight forward. Remember our black word negative, and it's positive. That's the wire for the switch on the torch, which we're not using, we're using a pedal. Gas connector goes on. It's a gentle nip, that's all it takes. So now we're ready to go and run some heavy amps. That's what we're going to be welding, half inch aluminium plate. Up. Once your tungsten touches, you may as well stop.
as you can see it was it was working quite nicely till I dip the tungsten in and you've got to start you've got to regrind your tungsten and start again it's no good carrying on with a contaminated tungsten to spoil the weld but that's not a bad weld that was a 200 amps AC but once it started to go out you used to be foot back I was probably putting maybe 165 170 amps in obviously as the job gets hot you can ease off towards the other end of the weld you had, had me foot well back probably 150 amps we had another dip of tungsten there it was, was going to be a nice weld ah yeah bastard I mean, this, this is half inch plate, this is not 16th aluminium, it's uh, You can see the clean action around there where the SA is cleaned the aluminium I'm blowing away the surface film of oxide Shit, that f***ing hurts. Ah, ah, ah. 